we are going to calculate the electric potential due to a collection of point charges. We have two charges that are placed on the y-axis like this. The first charge uh, has a charge of positive 2.7 nanocoulombs. It's located at a position of 25 centimeters from the origin. Here's my origin of like an XY coordinate system. So this distance here is 0 0.25 meters. All right. And my second charge of minus 3.9 nanocoulombs is at a position of minus 25 centimeters from the origin. So it's also down here below the x axis, um, down here on the negative y axis at a distance of also 0.25 meters or 25 centimeters. What is the voltage in volts at point P 25 centimeters away from the X? What is the voltage at, in volts at point P here located at a distance of 25 centimeters away from the origin on the X axis? So this distance is also 0 0.25 meters, and I did not draw these things to scale. We're looking for the potential at point P due to these two charges. So we're looking for the potential at point P due to these two charges here. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw in this line that goes from the charge to my point P, the charge to my point P. And here we've got a right angle triangle. Okay. Now, both of these are, of course, right angle triangles. And, and, and the problem asks us for the voltage in volts at this point P. That's the same thing as the potential. What's the electric potential right here at point P? So in order to find the electric potential at point P, that's just going to be the sum of the electric potential at point P from my first charge plus the sum of the electric potential at point P from my second charge. Our electric potentials are just, um, they're scalars, so we don't have to worry about the, the vector components of these. There are no vector components since it's a scalar, unlike what we would have to do if we were thinking about our electric field. Then to find the electric potential at point P due to these other two charges. We just have to find the electric potential um, from Q1 and Q2 at point P. We'll use our equation for electric potential is equal to K, which is our Coulomb constant, times Q. So we've got Q1 for my electric potential at point P due to charge one, all over, um, all over R which is the distance between my charge and the point. So I'll call that R sub 1 here. So we've got 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter squared over Coulomb squared. That's my Coulomb constant times Q1, which is 2.7 times 10 to the minus 9 Coulombs. Um, a nano Coulomb is times 10 to the minus 9 Coulombs and we divide it by the distance between point P and the charge. Well, let's figure out what this distance is. Um, both of these sides of my triangle, even though I didn't draw it to scale, are the same length. And this is what we call a 1, 1 square root of 2 triangle, where you've got two legs of the same length. Then the final leg will be that length times the square root of 2. So the final leg here, uh, or this, <clears throat> now this triangle, even though I didn't draw it to scale, is a special case of a triangle that we call a 1, 1 square root of 2 triangle, where two legs, both of the legs of the triangle are the same length, then the hypotenuse will be the length of those legs times the square root of 2. So the hypotenuse here will be equal to 
0 0.25 meters times the square root of 2. And that is equal to 0 0.35 meters. You could also prove it to yourself that this hypotenuse of the triangle is equal to 0.35 meters by using the Pythagorean theorem. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And you can get it in that way too. So if you remember trigonometry, this is a 1, 1 square root of 2 triangle. This distance then will be 0 0.35 meters. That gives us an electric potential at point P due to charge 1 of 69.4 volts. So that's positive. And then for our electric potential at point P due to our second charge, that's our Coulomb constant times Q2 all over, I'll call it R2, this distance between um, the charge and the point. So that's equal to 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared over Coulomb squared times charge 2 is negative 3.9 times 10 to the minus 9 Coulomb. And then we're dividing that by this distance. And this distance is also the same distance that we found up here, 0 0.35 meters. That equals negative 100.2 volts. So our electric potential at point P will be our electric potential at point P from charge 1, 69.4 volts plus our electric potential at point P from charge 2, minus 100.2 volts. And that gives us an electric potential of minus 30.8 volts. Now this problem is very similar to one of your workbook problems. Now let's say instead of asking you to find the electric potential at point P, I asked you about the electric field at point P due to these other two charges. Now, let's see. Our electric field vector is always pointing away from a positive charge. So my electric field from charge 1 at point P, this is a positive charge, would be pointing away from that positive charge along this direction here. That would be my electric field from charge 1 at point P. And then my electric field from charge 2 at point P, our electric field vectors point away from positive charges. They point toward <whistles> negative charges. So this would be my vector for the electric field from uh, charge 2. Okay, So both of these vectors have an x and y component. In order to find the total electric field vector at point P, you would have to find the x and y components for E1 and E2. And then from there, you could work toward finding the total electric field vector. I'm going to use this FET simulation to show you um, the potential around those point charges um, similar to the problem I just worked through. Here's the FET simulation. I had a positive charge of 2.7 nanocoulombs, but um, I can only do quantized coulombs here. So I'm going to do three nanocoulombs on top of each other. And they're separated. These charges were separated by a distance of half a meter. So we've got a bar down here, which is showing us the distance of a full meter. So half a meter would be one of these big squares. My other charge was um, minus 3.9 nanocoulombs. That's pretty close to four nanocoulombs. So I'm going to stack four of these on top of each other. You see how the potential is changing here? It tells us a little bit more about the equipotential surfaces around these charges. We wanted to find uh, the potential at a point um, just between these charges, but 2.5 centi centimeters along the positive x-axis. So actually, I can bring my little um, <laughs> measurement device here and get me 25 centimeters, 0.25 meters, right about there. 
if I get the right distances here, then I can actually do a pretty good job of getting really close to that value of um, minus 30 volts that we found for the problem. So right about here, kind of directly between these two charges, which are separated by 0.5 meters, at a distance along the positive axis at about 25 centimeters, looks here like I'm getting an equipotential of minus like 27 volts. When our problem, we had like minus 31 volts, but um, that's still pretty close for the fact that I couldn't exactly get the just right values here. Um, so this is just another way that you could play around with experimenting with what should these values of potential be and um, what does the electric field look like at that point? And actually, we could bring in, let me leave that right there, and let's bring in this sensor which shows the direction of the electric field at that point. The direction of the electric field at this point um, is pointing downward in this direction. And let me remove one of these negative charges so they both have the same value of charge here. And we can actually figure out what is the electric field at this point by bringing in uh, one of these sensors which shows the direction of the electric field at that point. So if we have a positive charge and a negative charge on this configuration like so, the electric field vector is going to be pointing down. Well, the electric field at this point from my positive charge is going to be pointing off in this direction. The electric field at this point from my negative charge is going to be pointing toward the negative charge. So you've got the electric field from the positive charge pointing away at that point, the electric field from the negative charge pointing toward it at that point. If the quantities of, are the same, then the, um, then the x components of the vectors are going to cancel and you're just left with the y component of those vectors summing up. And then we would get um, that our electric field vector at that point would be pointing directly downward.